Hi guys, this is part three of the oracle making uh, tutorial, if you like, um, where we are going to try to go into the whole painting business. Where I left it is uh, this stage, so my two images with a backing of wallpaper are now uh, properly glued onto this. I have stuck this underneath a couple of uh, pieces of paper, uh, a couple of big coasters, like this type, you know, coasters, and a large hefty book on top of that, just to get them to flatten out a bit more. I will uh, cut them out now and show you uh, a, at least part of my uh, painting process and what that looks like. I hope we can manage this uh, you know, in 10-15 minutes or so, because as you may be able to tell, the light is already fading. It's 10 to 3 in the afternoon here, and it's a bit overcast. It was brighter a while ago, but the sun is going down quite quickly before 5 o'clock. It will be night over here in the Netherlands. So, pausing, cut out these guys, and then on to the paint business. This is... This is important. This is the important part of the whole color tone uh, operation. More in a bit. So I'm cutting out the heptagons. Um, I'm realizing that one advantage of the heptagon shape is actually that they are straight lines. So whereas you might be tempted to try ovals, for example, those will be a bit more tricky to get cut out properly and um, yeah, this is rather easy actually to do. I got into the whole heptagon shape uh, because I discovered that shape in the word files that are in the program and I uh, just decided to try that out and I was also interested in the seven angled um, geometrical shape because of some older uh, astrological systems that work with seven planets and I applied a uh, you know sun through Jupiter Saturn set of seven planetary uh, concepts to my mushroom rune oracle that I was mentioning just now I would not, I wouldn't dare to stick that in here because it's just not the same kind of show at all. So comparing these in terms of size, you can see that they're quite a bit smaller than my original, um, you know, set of cards. As I said, I don't really think that's very important because I'm not relying on this to really become an oracle. I might have... Um, you know, chosen earlier for my part one uh, video to um, in, to show you my original file that has these that I used to print these out and just continue on from there. I honestly don't know why I wanted a new pristine file to have these two in there and uh, it's fine. These two Apart from the Lamo card that I got in my set here, I actually got a little baggie as well. Grab that from the other side of the table. This is my Indian uh, antique fabric that I uh, that I used. I keep uh, my cards in here, and this is my my Lamo card. See, I shown this in my Vajra Yogini um, vlog already. So, I think these will still be fine. I'm noticing that there is a peeling card again in my set here. See, again, we have this issue with the wallpaper glue. It'll just keep happening for a little while longer. And at some point, uh, they're okay. You know, you just have, you've gotten it down to all the angles. So what you get now, now that we've got these cut out, cardboard image like so, what you get is a white edge, right? It's actually a combo of a red edge. I don't think you'll be able to really see that very clearly, but there's the dark 
uh, red of the of the back cardboard there's the all that stuff all those layers you know and of course the paper that I the printer paper has got um, a white section as well so what I tend to do is I use this a lot actually I've used this for all my oracle card work so far this is a um, it says here ochre rouge red ochre I bought this in Roussillon in France at a shop which also sold me this one it's a yellow ochre let me open this up so you can actually see the color better um, these are pigments made from the soil in Roussillon I used to live in a town uh, six kilometers down the road from there in the medieval village that I was talking about earlier uh, I think yesterday it was in my uh, in my gold painting little mini session there when you add uh, what I tend to do is I add powdered gum Arabic which is this stuff which my dad actually gave me uh, bless his soul it's from a chemist and he probably had this for an age and a half before giving it to me because he wasn't using it anymore gum Arabic uh, is a type of resin basically so what you're doing is you're incorporating this the pigment powder I suppose you can all buy that online I'm quite sure for the Americas that you have red rocks as well over there I'm trying to think at this point whether I have a card handy or an image or a photograph handy otherwise I will have to to show you that uh, in a different session of the rocks the actual uh, what the what the countryside looks like it's a bit like a uh, Navajo country what I've seen on the internet there's uh, all these f fantastic uh, you know ravines and monument valley type kinds of landscape over there uh, and there's red earth there as well and I'm supposing it's all the same type of type of earth really so this is uh, the most important uh, ingredient is the gorgeous iron red earth color see how uh, nice and uh, warm that is this is the actual stuff that we have been using as humans certainly the, the females among us since the deep stone age all the paintings the rock paintings whether they're in Africa or in the south of France or in the west of France uh, that everybody uh, is, uh, you know, enthusiastic about uh, with hunting scenes, with what have you. you. They're either carvings or they're painted using a combination of charcoal and this stuff. Basically charcoal being black, right? And the earth itself comes out in different types of colors. So you get the yellow of the yellow ochre which looks so if I have my mixture made with the gum Arabic to uh, make it a bit more gluey and pasty you know it just gives it a better better consistency and it sticks to the paper better this is what I get from the red ochre let me shake that up a bit you get a really nice warm earth tone this is my top favorite paint ever you know I love this it's just if you were to add you can also use this in an egg tempera type base um, you could use this in oil paint just as easily where you would add linseed oil and that type of thing I have lots of um, different tubes of earth pigments they are not expensive in terms of oil paint certainly they're uh, they're not expensive at all these are the cheapest type because it's um, it's an old industry it's been around for ages and um, I think this deserves a lot more attention than it is getting and from people like us who are into magic and nature and psycho spiritual self-development and whatever you want to call that stuff all this is uh, connected to the earth right it is a strangely satisfying type of experience to be working with these inks. So um, I will be applying some of this to my edges of my uh, goddess, uh, my Tara cards here. 
I will first have to check whether they are actually uh, glued properly all around. It looks more or less fine. I'm wanting my little brush now. This is my favorite little brush. So you want brushes in three sizes basically. The big one for the basic gluey pasty business. This is my one. So a rather a good one. I think this was a fairly expensive brush. Um, the brand is Raphael or Carel, either one. It's a synthetic brush. Um, it looks like this at the end. It says synthetic, so it isn't real hair, but it's got nice bounce to it compared to these two, which are like cheapo, even though these are hair, I think. They're cheapo uh, brushes, but the, the hairs are less bouncy. That is an important factor in what brush brushes you're going to use. The type of brush you use will affect the work you're doing. You cannot do every type of work with every type of brush, even if you'd say this, this if you say this is the right size, these are different. An example is that this and this is nearly the same in terms of size. These are much tougher than than these. These are much softer. So this you will use for a washy type of effect over a surface of some sort, so to get a thinner transparent layer. This you will use, this I will use to push glue into a little fold in a crease or something that's, uh, you know, not filled with glue properly. So there's different uses for different brushes. So uh, having said that, I'm going to just quickly check around my edges here and they look mostly okay except for this bit here. So I'm going to stick to this one card. It just works the same always, you know. Here's my pot of glue again. And of course I only need a tiny smidge now to stick in here. And I go from side to side like this. Can you see what I'm doing? And maybe once more. There's actually a bit of blue. Blue paint. Blue, yeah, paint I suppose from ink palettes that I used yesterday on my little Tarot de Marseille. It's still in the brush. I haven't been able to wash it out properly. I've washed it out three or four times since then. And uh, just everything just turns blue each time and I have to be careful not to get any on my hands because otherwise my white Tara will have a blue, f will be blue in the face. So yeah, <laughs> we don't want that. Certainly with, what with Tumu and everything else, she should be fine. So I tend to have to go and do this type of thing, quite uh, maybe even at the same spot, uh, several times, push it together properly, bend it around a couple of times. It's okay if they're slightly bendy, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's finally, for now, this is glued and stuck together properly so that was that phase you have to do that because the next phase is actually where we go into the red paint and I'm always using this anyway no matter what the color tone of the um, I'm sure I'm, make, I'm making sure I don't have any on my hands or at least not too much I'm going like this with my brush so as to get really an edging job see and I can can you see the edge kind of disappears where it used to be white and striking and like in your face you just go from the side I suppose this is the most interesting bit really of my whole uh, operation here this paint does not dry extraordinarily quickly, so you it's not like acrylic. Acrylic paint just dries while you look at it. And then you have a choice to go like this, for example. What I've also done occasionally, I've certainly done with my Tantric Oracle card, is I sanded the corners just a tiny bit, or even snipped off a teensy 
bit there so as not to have sharp corners and sharp edges. Okie dokie. So you go in with your paint, make sure that there aren't any, you know, obvious computery looking bits and things. And uh, now I haven't sanded these around, that's what I would have normally have done, but it doesn't really matter all that much, I think. You get the idea, anyway. And as I do this, I see that there is another <laughs> gaping spot there. So, it's a labor of love, this thing. You have to just be sure to have enough time to do all this. And if I try to show you, I'm hoping I'm not getting too much paint on my figure here. I can go like this also, so that I get uh, like a more of a unifying line all around, like that. It depends a bit on my image. It's the one thing that's quite striking uh, about earth color paints like this is that they have a harmonizing effect visually on all color tones. Um, I did a sort of a varnishing job at one point a couple of years ago. I had a Voyager tarot, which is like a <laughs> screaming contrast uh, collage deck. I don't know if you know the Vo Voyager tarot. It's, it used to be quite famous in uh, some circles. It's um, This is the result here. It's a deck made out, made out of collage um, photographs torn and cut out and pasted together in not computer-generated imagery or computer, um, you know, composition uh, created in the computer, but uh, in real life. And one big advantage uh, or one big problem that deck has actually in... Uh, in its resulting um, imagery is that you get photographs, bits of pieces of photographs, landscapes and people and all the rest of it stick, stuck together in one image where the lighting is wildly different in all the separate pieces used in one card. Drove me nuts. I couldn't look at that stuff. I just went, this is not <laughs> happening for me. What I did is I used, actually I used an ink, so not this, but an actual ink in this type of color, in the yellow ochre type, more or less slightly darker than that. And an ink is transparent. It doesn't have the opaqueness that this has. All the earth pigments that you see here are opaque paints. So they have the actual earth in them. An ink can have the same color, but will be transparent most of the time, almost completely transparent. So I used an ochre wash, a yellow ochre wash, over the top of all my 78 or whatever many it was, uh, Voyager tarot cards. It was a massive improvement. It's a trick I learned uh, from oil painting, where if you have too many wildly different uh, types of colors in your painting, if you put an ochre wash over the top of it, and, uh, you know, where you would be using oil paint, so linseed oil, uh, turpentine, um, the resiny types of media, that kind of thing, uh, you get a nearly completely transparent uh, ochre paint from that. And you don't have to actually see the layer of paint that you're putting on, and the whole thing just comes together. The lighting, the atmosphere of what it is that you're doing comes together beautifully with uh, something similar to this. So I thought that was pretty magical at that point. I also made a video about that process and it is, I think, three years ago. So I would have to look that up uh, for you to have a look at. So basically what, what I do then is the other things that I can show you, like for example about this one, is as you can see, there's a strong blue triangle in here. That is actually a similar pigment to the red one 
in this uh, form. So it's a dark blue pigment that is on there. It looks a bit like watercolor type. So I may decide that it would be a good idea to use the same wash type because it's such a nice color. I would use that for the background of the white Tara here. See, that would make a lot of sense. It just be it becomes that much more earthy and solid. Another thing I did on this is, apart from the gold triangle that's in there, you won't be able to make it out, is that there's a, a shape in the triangle, the outer edge actually of the triangle, and the middle little triangle there. Actually, they have several layers. Uh, this one first, the red ochre paint I showed you just now, and it is followed by an orange layer, Winsor & Newton ink. This is a very strong color, massively gorgeous bright orange. I love this. It's not for no reason that I just have this much left of it. Um, it may be that it was actually this type of red ochre underneath, which is like a Venetian red more slightly darker and slightly more purpley than the first one however the so the property of this thing is the Winsor Newton inks is that it's at least for this color I'm not sure it happens for every color as it dries it becomes shiny so that's why you get this uh, strong effect here I thought that was really neat to have in the um, case of this geometric shape here. I have used the same combo, where did you go, of the red ochre followed when it is dried by, um, by the ink, so the completely different brand, completely different product on this one. See how shiny that is? That is just the, uh, that's basically the the combo of those two products. The red earth layer underneath provides the intense heat, you would tend to say, of the of the color. But because of the almost varnishy qualities of the of the ink afterwards, um it gets enormous depth. So that's what I wanted, right? To compare, this is the other one and this is uh, darker brown um, paints only with little bits of gold here and there. I may have to do something about this. I may also go and shop for a couple of more pots of uh, Winsor & Newton. I certainly could use another orange one. I um, suppose it is very much a matter of time familiarizing yourself with your tools and things and whatever you're chefing with. You know, it's like cooking much of this so whatever whatever else can i show you at this point uh my white tara card is drying and that takes a while i think it will take half an hour to dry it with the red pigment although yeah you can maybe see around the edge here that there's a couple of bits where i put the red ochre actually onto the front of the image you've seen me uh, you know, whisks the brush around in this way or in that way or the angle of the brush is really important. This actually looks like, almost like a rust. This is the opaque nature of the paint type that you see of the pigment as it is. And um, while that is, um, you know, very convincing as to it being historically relevant to us. I, th I, I think that we all have some of this red stuff in our blood. Actually, it's true because hemoglobin <laughs> and iron, you know, this is iron oxide in a, in a bag. So, yeah, I think we have this, we have a deep connection with this type of stuff. I had a peg just now that I used to close this up. Yes, there you are because you don't want this sprayed all over your living room, of course. Um, yeah, I have a pocket knife handy. I have lots of tools and things. This is an example of a pencil that has, its name is Venetian Red. This is a Darwin 
uh, really uh, fat color rich type pencil that you could use to also whenever they're really color intense and really um, you know they spread out really well the other side of that is you won't have any sharp lines really so there's that you might use this uh, to darken a surface the result of this will also be shinier so that's I think a level of work workmanship I suppose that you want to look at whether you want your cards to be more shiny or less what I am still going to do when I decide that it is done with this set is to spray varnish the whole lot of them I've done that before with uh, cards that were printed also with cards that were completely hand drawn and you get a certain tackiness that stays it's it, it's very crafty. It's all this is making making it happen for yourself. And I think I've if I look back at my oracle making history so far, that would be a theme of a whole different video, I think. I appreciate my oracle making the, the oracle making part of my life for a number of reasons. Certainly also uh, because I get to juxtapose all sorts of things that are important to me that are normally separated. For example, the runes, the mushrooms and the, uh, the planetary symbology and all that. I can do whatever I want. So I'd very much want you to invite <laughs> to invite you to do the same, to just throw caution overboard <laughs> and um, go ahead and collect images and do things with them and see what happens. And what I've noticed, one other thing I've noticed is that I've tried to use uh, Paint, the uh, the computer Windows Windows 10 version of Paint that is in, uh, in the Microsoft uh, program stuff where you can do all sorts of wild things but it just it doesn't float my boat i mean i can see how it would be useful to uh, to use in some types of context where you just want to edit an image slightly or for some reason that's absolutely perfect whenever everything's saved to the computer and you want to use that in a next stage where maybe you want to publish things you know I'm thinking of uh, Danny Mystic's uh, Mystic Master tarot that's coming out, Mystic Masters, uh, that's coming out, uh, that's been coming out um, over the past couple of months. And I think they're uh, going to be for sale quite soon on her Etsy shop. And uh, I'm going to get me some. And when I do, I will show them to you. Because she has actually used paint for the editing process of her cards once they were all completed in this stage of affairs i've wondered very much whether i would um, eventually want to publish something like this and so far i i don't see any publishing company being very happy with my heptagons because and the heptagons are important so i'm not selling this without it being i'm not selling rectangles with a heptagon printed on them it's not an option. So having said that, I'm going to really close up shop. I hope you can still see some of the bits and things. I will uh, consider uh, some at some point later whether I can show you uh, more detailed work, you know, in terms of adding blues and things, paints and ochres and comparing that. If I do, if I manage, if I have uh, something to show or something to tell you, I will, uh, I will do so. Okay. Thank you enormously. Thank you, Natalie, for the assignment. <laughs> I hope this um, does it for you because this is all I can do at this point. I uh, thank you so much for your support because uh, that's been awesome. I'm still uh, simmering, you know, like going all the way like this. What with your uh, comments to my Vajra Yogini video? Oh, it's so nice to have somebody out there who 
who, you know, understands what <laughs> what this stuff is about. Good lord. We will have to do this ourselves. Okay. So, thank you for watching. See you uh, see you next time. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.